Shankar and I are working hard to learn a little bit more on a molecular level about how tumors behave in patients who are responding to chemotherapy versus those who aren't. We are finding that just pooling everybody in one group as ovarian cancer patients is not good enough. And that is probably one of the reasons why some of our chemotherapies don't work. The very first funds we received to start this project were from the Sparkle Fund. The Sparkle Funds gave us the opportunity to start a preliminary work in order to apply for a larger pool of funding. To get them cured and then and then all the way through to survivorship and moving on with their life in a way that they have a wonderful quality. That's what we're going for here. And welcome to this edition of For the Record. I'm News 3's Eric Franke filling in for Neil Heinen. I'm very proud to be able to do it on the week of a very important event for women's health in the city of Madison, an event I've been honored to MC since it started back in 2008. Friday night, the 8th annual Sparkle of Hope will be held at the Madison Marriott West, a very important fundraiser that not only raises money to help fight gynecologic cancers, it's also a celebration of women who have bravely fought this disease, and I think even more importantly, raises awareness and enables people to see how cancer research, effective screening, prevention, and improved treatment can make a difference in the lives of all women. And our guests today include presenting sponsor, Jeannie Flesh, who is the vice chair of Sparkle of Hope, Sharon Sweeney, who is the event chair, and Dr. Laurel Rice as well, the department chair of obstetrics and gynecology. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on this very important week. I know you put a ton of work into Sparkle of Hope this week. And Jeannie, I mean, it's, it's been eight years now, uh, just an amazing growth that you've seen and, and, and a beautiful event every year. It has been. We're yeah. really proud of the things that we've accomplished. Sharon has worked very hard as our chairperson and, this year and um, Thank you. Now, Jeannie yeah, is thank the presenting you. sponsor, but Sharon, I know this, you put so much work into this, and it has to be rewarding for you to see it grow, just taking those baby steps back eight years ago to where it's come so far. It has been. We started out at Nakoma, and we outgrew that. We went to the concourse, and we outgrew that, and we were at the Edgewater last year, and um, we had 370 people last year, so now we're at the Marriott West. Where did the idea come from in, in terms of where you thought, I want to put together an event to go to the, the Gynecologic Oncology Center, and I mean, what was your inspiration on that when you started it in 2008? Well, actually, Jim Hoyt is the person that started it, so he has to get all the credit. Um, yes. His wife died in 2005. Cheryl, right. Cheryl, and um, he just asked us to, my husband and I, to be a part of it, mm -hmm. and so we have been a part of it since 2008. Yeah, that's and how I got involved too. Yes. Jim, Jim, of course, is the Dean Emeritus of the UW Journalism School, so he's very close friends with a lot of us here, and, and we remember when he went through that with Cheryl and how difficult that was. But I think every all of us are touched by cancer in some way, which kind of motivates us yes. to be more involved in this. Well, that's why Sharon and both of us are, we have lost mm -hmm. friends and mm -hmm. That has and that were are very dear and and we know people that and are we going have through this friends that are battling it now exactly and, um, so we're um, trying to raise awareness and mm -hmm. trying to raise money for research um, all of the dollars stay right here at the UW hospital and that's one of the yeah. best and things it yeah. stays it's, here with yeah. all with with the doctors such as Dr Rice and all of her programs and the other you know all of the doctors. Well, let's bring in Dr. Rice and, and yes. I mean, you've been you've been at this for a while in terms of at, at different locations, but UW, I mean, it really is special the way this community comes together for an event like this. Boy, you hit it right on the nail. This is a very special institution in a very special town, and I would like to start by thanking both of you. What you have done with Jim Hoyt helping as well with your team is nothing short of remarkable and we so appreciate it we as physicians and researchers and the patients it it just mm -hmm. I, I can't begin to thank you enough and getting back to the University of Wisconsin mm -hmm. it is a special place yeah. and we have a fantastic division led yes. by Dr. David Kushner the work that's being done is advancing the field and you are helping us thank you our number one priority of course is caring for patients mm -hmm. but we want to put ourselves out of work. And the oh. way to do that is to cure these cancers. And I think that our division in this university 
continues to push the field forward. And that includes basic science research, as Dr. Beryl Ludd and Dr. Patankar spoke about, but also clinical trials. Because in the end, we have to make sure that we're helping patients in a meaningful way. And this Sparkle event has just coalesced us around a very, very important community effort. You know, this is a day and age too where there's so many fundraisers for so many different causes. Exactly. And you're competing yeah. with all of these. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is one that, that I think, because of the work you have done, has started to, to take a step forward in terms of getting awareness in the community. We're hoping so. We've worked uh, I mean, really because seriously, five, seven, eight years ago, you didn't hear about this. And here we are That's talking right. about it. Well, there That's was right. one year we didn't make money. So. Um, and those are the baby steps you got to kind of go through, baby right, steps. to get so, to this point. Yeah, I mean, we're still pounding on doors mm -hmm. asking for <laughs> donations. <laughs> yes, we are. E even as, as close as we are today. Well, we talked about the growth, and we have a graphic on the screen right now that kind of illustrates, and this is the kind of hard work you put in. You know, you look at that first year, 2008, 140 people, and your net income's only $3,300, and you sit there thinking, okay, boy, this was a lot of work for only $3,300, but you guys must have had a goal in mind saying, and understanding back in 2008 when you start, okay, we only made this, or we didn't make money this one year, thinking, okay, but we have to go through these to get to that ultimate goal where we really make a difference. Can you talk about that? I mean, did you have that, that oh, kind of vision? Oh, every year we say, last year it was we wanted to make over 100000 and we did. Yeah. Um, so every year we, we want to raise more money, um, raise awareness, um, make sure that um, people come because it's a fun evening. Mm -hmm. um, we have the silent auction. We have a lot of great items mm -hmm. in the silent auction. And we have the live auction, and that has some wonderful um, items as well. Jeannie, did you want to talk about the live auction? Well, we, we just, uh, we have an awful lot of great people in the community, mm -hmm. business people that have, have donated to us. We have BR Diamonds, who um, this year uh, have given us a, a two items. Two <laughs> items. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it's just amazing. We have Lynn Hake from Babes, who is giving uh, us an outdoor party um, at, with brats and burgers. And so it's, it's such a community action mm -hmm. where we are going to the business people of this community and they've been so generous to us. Actually we have friends who have donated a week stay um, at a condo in Steamboat Springs wow. with lift tickets and dinners and spa treatments that's awesome. and you know that's uh, for friends that actually live in California that yeah. have just yeah. gotten behind the, the auctions cost. there I, mean, I can speak from having been there the last few years they've been fantastic I mean they're well, really nice. Vince and John have a classmate that from Edgewood High School and he's donated six cases of wine yeah for the wine pool the wine for the, pool yeah. is really for, we fun. have a wine <laughs> pool yes but so it every you know we do Kind of like I said, knock on a lot of doors, mm -hmm. but everybody is in this community has been so generous to yeah. us. It's really and been wonderful. Every year we find a jeweler for our diamond dig, and this year Goodman's has donated a beautiful ring with the sparkle symbol on it, and it's over a thousand dollar value. So yeah. some lucky person that buys a ticket will. Yeah, the sponsors have been so great and you have worked so tirelessly. We're just getting started here and talking about what a special event this, this is. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we will profile a survivor, but also it's an example of the amazing work they do through the gynecologic cancer program at Carbone. Stay, stay with us. We're back after this. Welcome back. We think it is important to profile the amazing work that the doctors at UW Carbone Cancer Center, the gynecologic oncology program, the work they do. And in recent years, after one area woman's diagnosis, Dr. David Kushner went to enormous lengths to learn a technique that allowed one patient to fulfill the lifelong dream of having a child after a bout with cervical cancer. It's what many little girls dream about. A wedding by the water, a Hawaiian honeymoon, and starting a family. As far as we knew, I was completely healthy by the time we got married. Even as Carol and its ex Swenson packed their bags for their honeymoon, another life-changing event was coming. Yeah, we left for Hawaii for two weeks, thinking that we didn't know what we were gonna hear. What they heard was that Carolyn was facing cervical cancer. For a young couple hoping to start a family, survival came first, 
they thought at the expense of something else. We were essentially told or under the impression that I would be having a radical hysterectomy, period. <laughs> Which, you know, sorry, <laughs> is rough to hear. It was really scary. You know, we, we just started talking about starting a family and then this, this came along. So for cervical cancer, the treatment has always been radical hysterectomy. Enter Dr. David Kushner from the UW's Carbone Cancer Center. When a patient comes to see me, most of the time, the number one thing on their mind is the cancer. I mean, they, um, I'm usually the one bringing up to them the fertility issue. And he asked if we had wanted to have kids and, you know, again, super emotional um, question for us. We both kind of broke down and said, yeah. And he said, well, there's maybe this thing we can do. It's called radical trachelectomy, a surgery that leaves the uterus, taking just the cancerous parts of the cervix, a nine hour surgery. It's success not known until several hours in. I went in that morning not knowing what I would wake up to. That was a long day, um, but six hours in, one of the nursing staff came and said, hey, it was a success. That was the most relief I've ever felt in my life. After six months of recovery, they got the go-ahead to start trying. I just remember waking up one morning and thinking, God, I just don't feel so great. Only this time, that was a good thing, because 37 weeks later... You come in? Oh! <laughs> meet Lila. We're just like, oh my god, I just can't believe. How did we get so lucky? I needed to sew Carolyn up, and they just left me with Lila on a bed outside of the, the room. And I, yeah, I had this moment, I was like, oh, wow. I've got this life in my arms. What am I gonna do now? <laughs> One thing was a trip back to see the people who made it all possible. This time, with someone else along for the ride. These folks were really, really hard. And for them to be able to see a one-year-old baby come into the clinic that wouldn't have existed otherwise, it sort of validates all the work they're doing. That is absolutely a serious rule of Dr. Kushner. <laughs> so there was one day I did not bring Lila, and I wasn't sure he was going to see me. <laughs> so not only do they have to bring their baby, but they have to be willing to have everybody come in and see their baby. People quit their jobs, drive across the country to get to a specialist that might know how to do something like this. This guy's in my backyard. And I've done stories on Sparkle of Hope now for six or eight years, and that was probably my favorite <laughs> in that, you know, he, you, you risk your life, or, or a mother is, is, you know, her life's on the line, yet life is still created. And I'm so, I was so impressed with Dr. Kushner. He had to learn this technology, I understand, through a gentleman who, who spoke French, right, in Quebec? That's correct. And he actually learned French so he could learn that technique, which is amazing. He's impressive. He is. Every year, I'm impressed more and more with what your staff is able to do. You really have a, a fantastic group of physicians and clinicians working with you. Indeed. Um, now, when you came to, you came from Virginia uh -huh. eight years ago. Can you talk about the growth in the department and what you've seen in, in your now, I guess, eight years since you've been in Madison? Uh, the department has grown and expanded. Um, obviously, G1 Oncology is my day job, and that's what I'm focused on from a professional perspective clinically. And under Dr. Kushner's leadership, the division has grown by three faculty members and has expanded at every level, not just the clinical level, but the research level. So it's been just so uh, rewarding to watch the work that he and his people are up to. But the rest of the department also is growing. I'm also very proud of the entire department. We have a robust reproductive endocrinology division as well as maternal fetal medicine. We're partnered with Meritor in terms of our obstetrical unit and they are fantastic partners. Uh, our general OBGYN group delivers many babies mm -hmm. in this community and I, I feel deep pride uh, and satisfaction to be able to work with the people that I do in this department. And just a statement about the Carbon Cancer Center, this community, the GYN Oncology Division, we are all so fortunate to uh, be at a facility where we have a world-class cancer center. And we partner with them in meaningful ways every day. And I feel grateful for that. 
And I know you went, you're the department chair, but you also like to be involved in treating patients still. Oh, yeah. Because that helps you, right? Yeah. No, I would never give that up under any circumstance. I mean, it's, it's, I have a heavily, you know, administration is a big part of my job, but taking care of women with GYN malignancies is still what I perceive to be my most important work. Mm -hmm. And no, I, I could never give that up. Well, we're going to talk more about kind of the warning signs because we want to make sure that those that maybe see the show that don't get to the event or, you know, don't see the story that, we're, that we aired uh, have an idea of symptoms, things to look for because it is, is difficult. So we'll have you touch on that a little bit in our next segment. But we will, re will return shortly. We're going to talk more about Sparkle of Hope as well and what an amazing event it is when we return in a moment. Stay with us. And welcome back to For the Record with our guests talking about Sparkle of Hope. And we talked about keeping the money local, and there's a big reason why that's even more important now. That is absolutely true. I think it's important to recognize that the work we are doing at the University of Wisconsin, partner with the Cabon Cancer Center, is advancing the field. And it's in the context of decreasing federal funding in general for research, but more so for women. If you look at 2008 compared to 2012, there was a 6% reduction in both men and women enrolling in clinical trials. There was a 19% reduction of enrollment for women alone. I, I can't speak to why that is. I can only say that the federal funding for research in women's health care, and certainly for GYN oncology, is, is um, much less than it used to be. Yes. It makes this effort even more important. I, I feel like we'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about symptoms and and how and bring a little um, uh, publicity to this and awareness because it's it's a difficult one to diagnose, isn't it? Because they mimic a lot of other symptoms, right? It absolutely can, and it's important to look at the three most common cancers from a gynecologic perspective. Last year, we were focused on cervical cancer, mm -hmm. and the one of the most important symptoms of that is irregular vaginal bleeding. Now, endometrial cancer, we're going to be having a guest speaker, a patient, discuss uh, her care at UW who was diagnosed with endometrial cancer. And again, one of the most common symptoms there is irregular vaginal bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding. Mm -hmm. Ovarian cancer is more complex in that the symptoms are less specific mm -hmm. uh, and more vague, um, bloating, some discomfort, change in bowel or bladder habits decreased appetite, and those symptoms can represent several disease processes. Uh, so ovarian cancer itself is, is, is more difficult to pick up at an earlier stage. Women really have to be proactive and yeah, really know definitely. their bodies. Yes. Uh, let's talk about Sparkle of Hope because, you know, we talk about cancer and sometimes that's a depressing topic, but I can tell the viewers out there that if you go to this event, it is very uplifting, Sharon. It I mean, is. It, it, you really it feel is. good you feel when you go home good. at night. Yes. You do. I think the patient stories are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we've had just some amazing speakers uh, at our event. And, um, you know, each one focuses on a different type of cancer, as Dr. Rice was mentioning. Um, this year it's uterine cancer. Um, we um, just, you know, hope to raise awareness because some of these cancers are very tricky. And if we raise awareness, if one person goes to their doctor and says, you know, I'm having this symptom, uh, we will have done our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeannie, I know that uh, we, we talked about how it can be uplifting too. We saw Carol in Swenson's store. She's now on your Sparkle Committee as yes, well. Yes, she is. And Lila's growing up and they're really, it's amazing the and work those, they do. Those are the heart-wrenching stories mm -hmm. that you see and those are the ones that still yes, bring right. us to tears because yeah. this is a very heartfelt organization. Um, we do this because we've lost people mm -hmm. and we And we want to keep people really alive. Right. Want mm -hmm. to keep yeah. We we want our doctors to find cures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, and I think even as a guy that goes to this, you leave that, and the husbands and the brothers that are in the room, you leave that event thinking, you know, maybe I do need to, to be more proactive with my loved ones, telling them about this, so you can spread the word, yes. and you really feel like you've raised, like there's awareness raised to this, to this issue. So 
the, do the doctors there are working tirelessly every day and uh, you're always getting amazing new breakthroughs. We talked about radical tra trachelectomy. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing the stuff they're doing there. Yeah, the research is just so important to advancing the care for women with these kinds of malignancies and for preventing them. Prevention is, of course, ideal. And last year, cervical cancer was the cancer we focused on. And the HPV vaccine, which has been available for multiple years, is a very effective prevention strategy for cervical cancer. Um, and we are looking for the same with our other cancers, ovarian cancer. This is a tremendous effort to identify those women at higher risk because of their genetic makeup. And those efforts are starting to pay off. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, how, how far have we come? I mean, you, in the years since you started in, in obstetrics and gynecology, in terms of really getting some good answers to some of these diseases? Well, I think I've been in, finished my fellowship 26 years ago, and with cervical cancer, a tremendous amount of progress has been made. And in fact, while worldwide cervical cancer is the most common cancer affecting women, in this country that's not the case. And that is a result of excellent prevention strategies and screening. Uh, ovarian cancer, we have made progress. Um, while it's not a common cancer, it's a cancer that is more difficult to cure. And the progress that's been made has included, as I mentioned, studying genetic makeup, but also developing new strategies to treat, including new chemotherapeutic agents, targeted therapy specifically, and different surgical approaches. So progress has been made. Well, that's amazing to hear. And there's the Sparkle Hope benefit. <laughs> SparkleHopeMadison.org, right, ladies, is the yes. website. And, and we need to have you sign up by tomorrow, but there are still a few seats available oh, at the event. So please do. <laughs> SparkleHopeMadison.org, and we'll be right back as we talk a little bit more and close things up on Sparkle of Hope. And we'd like to thank our guests today from Sparkle of Hope, Sharon Sweeney, the event chair, Jeannie Flash, the presenting sponsor and co-chair, and a special thanks to Dr. Laurel Rice, the chair of the UW Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, for her time today and her tireless work to help save lives. We look forward to another beautiful night, Sparkle of Hope, this Friday at the Madison Marriott West. And we hope to see many of you out there at this great event. Again, for Neil Heinen, I'm Eric Franke. Thanks for watching.